Lord, we give. Lord, we give you glory. We give you glory. Glory to the Lamb. Lord, we give you glory. We give you glory. Glory to the Lamb, for you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you. We lift our voice to say, You are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne and unto you we lift our voice to say you are the lamb upon the throne Aya ya na na ya na 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 sha na na ee ya na 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 sha na na ya 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 na 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 ya sha na 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 ya na 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 sha na na ya ya na 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 ya na 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 ya 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 na 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 ya na 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 ya my life is all about you lord all of you and none of me I decrease that you might increase, that I may know you, Lord Jesus. I count every other thing as done. There is one guy in my heart. Come and feel me. Feel me, Lord. Come and feel me. To overflow. Come and feel me. Feel me, feel me, Lord. Come and feel me. To overflow, come and feel me. My life is all about you, Lord. All of you and none of me. I decrease that you might increase. That I may know you, Lord Jesus. I count every other thing as done. There is one guy in my heart. Come and feel me. Feel me, Lord, come and feel me. To overflow, come and feel me. Feel me, feel me, Lord, come and feel me. My life is all about you, Lord. My life is all about you, Lord. My life is all about you, Jesus. My life is all about you, Lord. My life, it's all about you, Lord. All of you and none of me. My life, it's all about you, Lord. Lord Jesus, have your way. Come and take charge. Welcome you, Jesus. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way in this place. Come and take charge. Come and take charge. 
make me an instrument of your glory glorify yourself this moment it is the moment of your glory O oh God it is life-giving moment come and minister life to every hearer minister life to every listener Lord that all glory might be yours take all the glory Jesus Take all the glory, Jesus. Take all the glory, Jesus. Let our King be lifted high. Oh, Zahana. Let our King be lifted high. Mashito Masudia. Oh, Zana Nama Ayana no shananai, ayana no shananai, yana na 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 na, yana na no shananai, ayana na ya yana na no shenai. Lord, we give you glory. Take all the glory, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I welcome every one of you. Thank you for joining us today. Spiritual Advantage Part 2. Last week we started talking about spiritual advantage. And we laid emphasis on the fact that life is spiritual. And because life is spiritual, Therefore, living must be spiritual. Life is spiritual. Therefore, living must be spiritual. It is good we understand the economy. It is good that we study many other things. It is good that we are financially buoyant. It is good that we get all other advantages that we can get but none of them can be compared to having spiritual advantage because life is not economical life is not financial life is not intellectual life is not social life is not scientific life is spiritual life is spiritual the least studied Yet, the hallmark of life and living is spirituality. Many people pay attention to different things. They pay attention to the way they spend their money. They pay attention to finances, how to get money and spend it. They pay attention to to their career. They pay attention. People pay attention to different things. But only very few people pay attention to the spirituality of life. And that is because many do not know that life is spiritual. In fact, even you see that commonly people are sent to school. Parents rarely send their children to school. And maybe as from the age of one, the child will begin KG classes go through KG, go through nursery school, go through primary school, go through secondary school, tertiary institutions, and schooling continues, improving the person's intellectual capacities and abilities. They pay attention to, to studying the earth, studying worldly things, studying earthly things, so that one can be useful on the earth, so that one will not be disadvantaged as far as earthly things are concerned, but only, few, only very few parents 
ever care to send their children to where they will learn spirituality. And that is why many things happen and take many people as a surprise today. Things happen to them as mysteries. Because they wonder if this, if one plus one is two, how come this is this way? They wonder that things are still unfolding without their, their knowledge, despite all the years of, of schooling that they have gotten. Despite all the knowledge that they think that they have acquired, they are still, there is still much that they do not know. And that is because many have ignored spirituality. Bible said that, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And the greatest lack of knowledge that for which people are destroyed is lack of the knowledge of spiritual things. Lack of knowledge in spirituality is the greatest reason for which people are destroyed. People die like, like foul. People suffer diseases that they, they cannot say anything about or that they do not know about. Even medicine do not know about it. Medicine can tell you it's idiopathic. People's businesses crash. People, things turn around for people. Homes break. Different things happen that people cannot give any explanation for. Things keep getting destroyed because people lack spiritual knowledge. The spiritual controls the physical. Life is spiritual. And so, truly, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and that different kinds of knowledge, but topmost, that is the, the chief among them all, is spiritual knowledge. People know, people know very little when it comes to spiritual matters. And it's not just about going to church. Going to church is different from being spiritual. Now, this is the essence of this, of this message. This is the essence of this series. It is to make you spiritual. It is for you to understand spirituality, understand the advantages you have in spirituality, understand what advantage, what it will profit you to be spiritual, and then how to be spiritual, how to engage, engage the spiritual exercises for you to actually have the spiritual advantages that you are supposed to have. It is not, it is not about religion. No, far from religion. There are many people who are religious, but they are not spiritual. The essence of this series is so that you become spiritual. Be spiritual. In Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21, there is a man that up to today he is known by the foolish act that he exhibited. He was a man who thought that life, that life was economical, or that life is economical. And so he labored and acquired as much wealth as he could acquire. And when he has gotten so much wealth, he said to himself, now I have nothing else to worry myself about. So what I'm going to do, I'll just increase my storehouse. And then my, my soul should just make merry and rejoice in this and just relax not bothering myself not doing any other thing and that night his life was requested from him that night his life was taken away from him and so he couldn't tell about all the wealth that he has acquired he thought that life was economical not knowing that life is spiritual so he paid attention to the economy and of course, whatever the Bible said, give yourself wholly to it so that your profiting will appear to all. Whatsoever you give yourself to, your profiting will surely appear to all. He gave himself to the economy and of course he acquired much wealth. But he neglected spirituality and then spirituality taught him a lesson that other people should learn from. That you cannot be much, you cannot do much neglecting spirituality if you neglect it you might acquire the whole wealth but your life your life might eventually go for it just one little thing can just come and take away your life 
people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, especially lack of spiritual knowledge. That man is commonly referred to as the rich fool. The rich fool. Even God, even Jesus called him that same. Jesus called him the rich fool. He was rich, but he was foolish. Anybody who neglects spirituality, he might be rich. But I tell you, if he neglects spirituality, he is foolish. He might be educated, but if he neglects spirituality, he is foolish. He, he might have position in the society, but even if he has position in the society and neglects spirituality, he is foolish. You know, I, I have seen, um, Bible said I have seen, um, I have seen an evil, a misnomer, something, something, something that should not be that, but unfortunately it is in this world. How it is that um, princes are trekking, but servants are riding on horses. Now there is something similar to that, and that is when people who are not spiritual are teaching people who are spiritual spiritual life, or are teaching people who are spiritual how to live life. You know. You sometimes when you engage in spiritual exercises, people who are not spiritual, people who know nothing about life, they come to you mocking you. You shouldn't blame them anyways. But we say a carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It's not that he he will not. It's not that he does not. He cannot. He does not have the ability to. But the problem there is only when you now allow them to be the ones to detect for you how you should live. Someone who does not know anything about spirituality. I tell you, no matter how old he is, he is a baby. He is just beginning to learn how to live. He should sit down and learn it from you. And learn from you how to live. Not you succumbing, not you actually yielding to his own way of life. No, no way. Hallelujah. The one who understands spirituality is the one who understands life. And so know it that there is no spiritual exercise that is in vain. Every spiritual exercise is an exercise unto life. You are exercising yourself to live and to live the real life and abundant life of Jesus, as Jesus said. He said, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. John 10 verse 10. So every spiritual exercise that you do is an exercise unto life. You are exercising yourself to live. The more spiritual you become, the better for you. Be spiritual. Hallelujah. So, um, very quickly, I want to start talking about the advantages of spirituality. The advantages of being spiritual. Why should you be spiritual? Why must one be spiritual? Why is spirituality needed? What are the spiritual advantages? What are the things that one stands to gain by being spiritual? Now, uh, uh, last week when I began to teach, I said that there are things one cannot do without the aid of his spirit. I also emphasize that even though in the spirit there are different kinds of spirit that can help a man or that can do certain things for a man, there are things that only the spirit of God can do. There are things that demons cannot do. There are things that even Satan cannot do. There are things that only God can do. Hallelujah. And so even though we might see some of this, that to an extent you also see it in the kingdom of darkness, but that is limited. That's limited. That's limited. Only God, only in God will you find the things that I'm going to mention without measure. So there are advantages. There are reasons. There are things that one can get by being spiritual and without being spiritual you can't get them number one number one is protection protection 
protection every man needs protection every man needs protection first john chapter 5 verse 19 bible tells us that the whole world lies in wickedness the whole world lies in wickedness that is why every man needs a covering every man needs protection the whole world lies in wickedness wickedness is everywhere in the world wickedness is real in this world wickedness is real in this world that the wicked ones are in operation that the evil ones will pursue someone in order to terminate that person's life in order to to use less that person's life in order to ensure that that person does not amount to anything brother it is real it is real that the evil ones will seek how to make someone fall it is real that the evil ones will seek how to make someone become sick it is real that they can send sickness it is real that they can send death it is real that they can send hardship it is real that they can send that they can that, that they can send destruction it is real it is real that the whole world lies in wickedness that is why every man needs protection a man who is not covered will be easily hit by these things but then bible said psalm 23 verse 4 that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me i tell you the truth only someone who is covered can actually say that only someone who is protected can say that that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil there is no denial that there is a shadow of death and i tell you that wherever the shadow of death is there is death because there can never be a shadow without a substance it is the substance that actually gives rise to the shadow it's only that this death hides when you see some people the reason why you are seeing only the shadow of death where you are is because the death is actually afraid of you what you see as shadow of death is dead to some other people because when someone without the protection without the fortification you have gets there death will show up but because of the fortification that you have as we continue you will see god said i've made you a fortified city because of the fortification that you have that is why what you are seeing is just the shadow of the death because shadow cannot hide death can hide but it is impossible for it to hide its shadow now because 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 of you that is why the death is hiding and you are seeing only the shadow and shadow cannot harm it is only the main substance itself that can harm so a value of the shadow of death tells us that there is indeed a value of death people get there and they do not come back people get there and their life is terminated but you get there oh you walk through the valley of the shadow of death you fear no evil. Why? For God is with you. It is that assurance that makes you know that you are kept. You are kept by the power of God. The only thing that can take you away, the only thing that can terminate your life is only that which can terminate the life of God. Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. So there is a valley of death for which everyone needs protection. Anyone not protected cannot go there and come out. And this valley of the shadow of death is on the street. It is on the highway. It is in the society. It is everywhere. It presents in different forms. It is even in the houses, on the doors of people. But you are protected. You are kept. 
one of the most or one of the greatest things that being spiritual offers to anybody is protection protection some who do not know that they can get it with god that they can get it in the kingdom of light they go to the kingdom of darkness for it and you see people that <laughs> you see that someone can actually go to a herbalist or a native doctor and they will do some things on his body for which when he comes out he doesn't he's not afraid of the things happening happening on the street they might say oh they are shooting there you say nothing is happening he walks through the place where they are shooting where they are where where bullet is bullets are raining and he walks through that place not fearing anything that is because he knows that that bullet cannot hurt him why because his body has been fortified yeah and so it is it is also in the kingdom of light you know that which the devil prays with is just the little part that the devil had as an angel that was working with god that wasn't taken away from him when god cast him down now imagine if the devil can have that amount of power imagine how much power there is with god the bible said once as he spoken twice have i heard that all power belongs to god power truly belongs to god you can be fortified you can be protected you can be covered and this is available to everyone it is available to everyone who is in christ protection is available to everyone who is in christ so in this spiritual is a place where you are covered and if anyone be covered in the spirit he's covered already in the physical hallelujah first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 from verse 18 first john chapter 5 from verse 18 bible says we know that the person who has been born of god does not go on sinning rather the son of god protects them and the evil one cannot harm them the evil one cannot harm them we know that we are from god and the whole world lies under the control of evil ones now look at this bible says you know in verse 19 he says that the whole world lies in wickedness it is in the control of the evil one but there is a confidence that we have we know that we are of god we know that we are of god and he says that anyone who is of god that the son of god keeps him and the evil one cannot harm him the evil one cannot touch him this is the confidence this is this is what you need to know and then you can go to sleep you can go to sleep relaxing it doesn't matter what is happening in your environment you are protected you are kept says the evil one cannot not the evil one does not the evil one cannot the evil one does not have the ability to so there are people who are on hot table there are people who are unkillable. There are people who are untouchable. These are the ones who are truly spiritual. These are the ones who have who have surrendered their lives to Christ. These are the ones who are who, who are following Jesus to be like Jesus. Says the evil one cannot. The evil one cannot touch them. First John chapter five verse four. Bible says. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now, because you are born of God, overcoming the world is your portion. So it doesn't matter what is happening in the world, you know that you are a winner. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. First John chapter 4 verse 4 Bible says 
ye have got ye have got little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so anyone who is in god knows that he is greater than he that is in the world it is you are greater because of the person who is in you because god himself the maker of the whole universe resides in you what a privilege what an honor So you get protection from God by being spiritual. Anyone who neglects spirituality neglects his protection. He begins to look for protection in places where he cannot find it. But in God, you have the maximum covering. In God, you have the greatest covering. You have the greatest protection. Psalm 91, Psalm 91 from verse 1, the Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It is only for he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Where is this place? That's what we're talking about, spirituality. It is the spirit realm. He that dwells in that realm he that is spiritual. He that dwells in the spiritual realm where God dwells. He that dwells where God dwells. He that is with God. So that he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Like I said earlier, wherever there is shadow, there is substance. Wherever the shadow of the Almighty is, the Almighty himself is also there. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So, it is established it is established that there is destruction that works at noonday it is established that there is something called noise on pestilence it is established it is established that there is pestilence that walk in darkness pestilence that walk in darkness and destruction that walk at noon so, meaning that whether day or night, there is evil flying. So, man constantly needs to be protected from this evil flying. Because of the, this evil that is flying at noon and in the darkness, a, a thou, thousands are falling. But Bible said that it is only with your eyes you behold it. A thousand might fall at your at your side, ten thousand at your right, but they will not that will not come near you. It's only with your eyes you behold and see, oh, this is what is happening. Why? Because you are protected. Yes, it is not everyone that goes under the rain that is drenched by the rain. Someone who goes under the rain without without a raincoat, without an umbrella will be drenched but there is this other person who is going under the rain he's wearing a raincoat and he's also carrying an umbrella he will be in the midst of people who are drenched without he himself being drenched the reason is because he's protected that's something bible is saying he's not taking you away from 
the midst of the people. You are still in the midst of the people. The people are falling, but you are not falling. Why? Because you are protected. Because you are protected. It says, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Hallelujah. So, he will give his angels charge over you. You are kept. You are protected. Why? Because you have made the Lord. You have made the Most High your habitation. So, it is you dwelling in the Most High. And the Most High is not a physical structure that one can dwell in. He's a spiritual structure. So you must be spiritual before you can dwell in him. But we say that God is, God is spirit. Therefore, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you want to dwell in God, you have to be spiritual. Be spiritual. And when you become spiritual, one of the spiritual advantages you get is the covering of the Most High. You dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Second Chronicles chapter nine, chapter sixteen, verse nine. Second Chronicles chapter sixteen, verse nine. Bible says, "For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show Himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards Him." Oh my. This is the best thing that can happen to you, that your heart is perfect towards God. Because when your heart is perfect towards God, <laughs> there is nothing that can harm you in this world. There is nothing. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. God is constantly searching, con constantly searching, looking everywhere. To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. <laughs> so, God wants to show his power too. There are really times when God actually wants to show his power. When God actually wants to show that he is strong. God wants to show the world that he is strong. And he manifests himself on your behalf so that the world will know that he is God. The commander of the heavenly army. His eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Throughout the whole earth. So there is no place where you say, oh, this happened without God knowing. No. God sees everyone everywhere. Everyone everywhere. Psalm 27 verse 1. Psalm 27 from verse 1. We'll read to verse 5. Psalm 27, Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Hallelujah. There is a time truly called a time of trouble. 
There is a time truly called a time of trouble. And he says that, but, but the good thing, the Bible said that in the time of trouble, he will keep me in the secret of his pavilion. He will keep me in his secret place. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. The tabernacle of the Most High has secret places where he hides his own. And so, so you can be sure that no evil will touch you. That's why the Bible said in 1 John chapter 5, where we read, 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, that the evil one cannot touch him, cannot touch whosoever is in God. No, it is a place where the evil one cannot come to. That is your place when you come to God, when you follow God, when you become a spiritual person in Christ. Say so it does not matter though a host, though, though the enemy surround me, round about me, say no, I will not be afraid. In fact, I will be confident. You remember Elisha when the army of Syria came and surrounded him thinking that they were going to take him captive. And his servant, his servant saw them and became troubled. But Elisha was confident. He was confident. He did not even behave as though anything was happening. And then his, his servant, not getting what was happening, became worried and said to him, Master, look at the army of Syria all around us. Elisha simply prayed and said, God, open his eyes. Let him see that those who are with us are more than those who are against us. And the Lord opened the eyes of his servant. And then his servant saw chariots, horses of fire all around Elisha. And of course, his fear disappeared. He became confident like Elisha as well. Your eyes might not have seen these chariots of fire all around you, but I tell you that they are all around you. So be confident. Be confident. Just be spiritual. In Isaiah 59 verse 19, Bible said that so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Like I said earlier, everybody needs protection in this world. And that is because the enemy will surely come. Yes. Bible did not say if the enemy will come like a flood. He said when, which means it's just a function of time, he will come. The enemies will come. But when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. And he will raise a standard against him in such a way that they will fear the name of the Lord. They will fear the name of the Lord because of what the Lord will do. He will raise a standard against them. The Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. Against any enemy that wants to come, come against you. They will come, but they will not prevail. Would the enemy come to fight against you? Yes, they will come. But would they prevail against you? No, they will never prevail against you. Would they seek to hurt you? Yes, they will seek to hurt you. Would they be able to hurt you? No, they won't be able to hurt you. <laughs> Bible said, I lay in Zion a stone. I lay in Zion a rock. And he says that whosoever believes in him will never be ashamed. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 44, Matthew 21 verse 44, Bible said, And whosoever shall fall on this stone, 
shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. So, <laughs> this is our confidence. You cannot be hurt. Because of this stone, which is Jesus Christ, he said that whosoever shall fall upon this stone, anybody who will fall on this stone will be broken. Anything, any enemy, any evil one, he has said that the evil one cannot touch him. But now the evil one decides, any evil one who decides saying, I must touch him. Then he said that whosoever shall fall on this rock, that evil one that will decide to come and fall on you, says he will be broken. And then if you now decide to consciously fall on him, say he will be grinded to powder. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 18 Bible says as for me today I'm making you a fortified city today I'm making you a fortified city an iron pillar and a bronze wall against the whole land verse 19 he says they will fight against you but they won't prevail against you because I am with you, declares the Lord, to deliver you. They will fight against you. So it is no news that people are fight, fighting against you. Just know it that almost as long as you live, there will be people, there will be, there will be evil ones who would always come to fight against you. But they will not prevail against you. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail against you. Because God is with you to deliver you. He said, because I am with you to deliver you. I am with you to deliver you. So it does not matter who comes to fight against you. It does not matter how many of them come to fight against you. They will try, but they will not prevail. So just make sure you are not shaking. Just make sure you are relying on God. Rely confidently on him. So it doesn't matter what they throw at you. I've made you a fortified city. I have fortified you. In one of my teachings, the teaching on divine immunity, I talked about how it is that when you give, when you give a vaccine to someone, because of that vaccine, you have fortified that person against the disease in the society. And so you, the person, you are sure the person is protected, not minding the fact that he's in a place where the disease is prevalent. Now, the same thing happens. It does not matter the evil in the world. The whole world is full of evil. But then God said, I have fortified you. I have made you a fortified city. You will live in a world full of evil, but no evil will touch you. And what God used to fortify you is himself. He said, because I'm with you. As a vaccine will be given to someone to protect the person, or as um, the juju priest will give a charm to someone to keep that person, so has God given himself to you to keep you. So has God given himself to you to protect you. So there is a charm with which you are pr protected. That charm is God himself. There is a vaccine, there is a vaccine with which you are protected. That vaccine is God Himself. He said, I've made you a fortified city. The KJV says, I've made you a defensed city. You are a defense city. You are a defense city. You are defensed already. You are a protected city. You are a cover city. You are a fortified city. You are fortified. So it doesn't matter what the devil may throw at you, it cannot hurt you. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I want to read um, from verse 1. The Bible says, But now, thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, 
fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, and Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, that thou, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. Hallelujah. Fear not. It says, when you pass through the waters, they will never overflow you. When you pass through the fire, I will be with you. The flames cannot kindle against you. You can't be burnt because you are protected. There is a hand holding you. You remember the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember them, how that they were thrown into the fire, a real fire. The fire burnt those who threw them there. That's to tell you the intensity of the fire. But they were not burnt. Why? Because they had fireproof. They were protected. They were covered with fireproof. God with you is fireproof. God with you is fireproof. So that when the fire of life comes, it might be burning or dust, but it cannot burn you. God with you is waterproof. So that when the water, the river, comes to carry others away, it cannot do you anything. It cannot carry you. It cannot overflow you because of God that is with you. So the river, the, 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 the fire, fire of life comes burning through different means, through different things. But you are not burnt because God is with you. Notwithstanding the challenges that may come in your life, notwithstanding the challenges of life, it is certain that you would overcome. It is certain that you would triumph because God is with you. God, God with you is what you need for victory in your life every day. You are protected because God is with you. He is more than even fireproof. He is more than he is more than disease proof. He is more than sickness proof. He is more than think it anything that you can call it. He's more than bulletproof. It doesn't matter the kind of bullet that the devil may want to throw at you. Be sure that you are protected. And let this confidence be in you and let it remain in you. Let it grow in you. Nurture it every day. You are protected. This heritage is for all who are in Christ. It is for all who dwell in the sacred place of the Most High. It is for everyone who stays in the Spirit with God. God is Spirit. Hallelujah. Therefore, everyone who worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. I wanted to just begin to pray. Tell God, thank you for this wonderful time father we say thank you lord jesus we bless your name thank you jesus be glorified O god we give you praise and glory we worship you jesus thank you father i want you to begin to thank god for the protection that he has given you thank god for keeping you thank god for protecting you Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the protection. The whole world lies in wickedness, but we are kept by the power of God. 
Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we do not take it for granted that which you have done for us. Thank you for keeping us every day. Asumade shunande bruchata kupa suzenia. Rasoto media basoto komusha mini sabotaya. Ekrasetonde buyade shakaludu bayata. Ayandwa shito brasoto kumusende brashuto kobuseniga. In the name of Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Every day the devil keeps firing darts at people. Every day the devil keeps trying to hurt people. Every day the devil keeps fighting against humanity. Every day people, the devil keeps trying to bring people down. But in all this, in all this, I want to pray for you. The protection of God be your portion. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. That no arrow of darkness will hit you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Every arrow of sickness. Every arrow of death. Every arrow of destruction. Every arrow the devil has thrown to hurt you. In the name of Jesus, I cancel them now. In the name of Jesus, I command back to sender in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that you are protected. You are kept by the power of God in the name of Jesus. May this confidence dwell in you continually, continually and forever. In the name of Jesus. May this confidence, may this faith dwell in you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have listened to me, but you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, no one can have this protection without knowing Jesus, without making Jesus his Lord and Savior. Everyone who is not in Christ is vulnerable to the devil. And so today, I want you to come into Christ. I want you to come into Christ. Come into Christ so that you can be covered, so that you will be protected. You want to do that, it is, it is very easy for you to do that. You just say this after me. You confess this with your mouth because you believe it in your heart. And once you do that, you are born again. And then you can join us and then begin to live this precious life that Christ has prepared for you. So you just say after me, Lord Jesus, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. From henceforth, I pray that I will not go back to the world. I am for Jesus and for Jesus alone. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have made that prayer, I welcome you to the family of Christ. Congratulations. The best that can happen to any man just happened to you. And I pray for you that the power of the cross that enables a man to live above the world. May it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I pray for you that you be strengthened to live the life of Christ. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that the protection that God gives, that it rest upon you. Be fortified with the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray this prayer for everyone, everyone who has been hurt by the arrow of darkness, by the arrow of the devil. Every affliction that the devil has sent to your body, in the name of Jesus, I remove that arrow now. For everyone listening to me, everyone under the sound of my voice, Bible says that whatsoever my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted out. I pray for you anything in your body, anything in your body that is not planted by God be rooted out now in the name of Jesus I curse every sickness I curse every disease in your body I speak wholeness to you be healed be whole be free now in the name of Jesus thank you father we give you glory in Jesus 